Hello again, it is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to this video which is part three of the sequence of operation of boilers but this time we're looking at condensing boilers. It's a long title. Anyway, before we get into this video please could you take some time to subscribe and uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. Mondays and Wednesdays if you've forgotten. Anyway, done enough waffling and messing around, so let's get on with it and find out what the sequence of operation is for condensing boilers. But remember, they're not all exactly the same. The boiler we're going to be looking at for this sequence of operation is this Ariston, behind me, this Ecombi 1. So like we did in video 1, let's first have a look at what this sequence is and let's see if you can find out exactly which component turns on first. So as you can see I've removed the cover already but before you go sticking your little fingers in where the PCB is make sure one your gas safe registered, two you followed all the safe isolation checks and before you remove the cover make sure you follow the safe to touch test. So that's all the health and safety again over and done with so you have been warned. Now this boiler is turned off at the plug socket as well, like we did with the atmospheric glowworm. We're off on the um, time clock and you can see there is nothing on the display. So if I turn it on, have a listen. So, what did you think that was? We'll find out in a minute. Now, let's turn the time clock on and see what happens. Well, that was pretty quick, wasn't it? So let's go to the board now and let's find out exactly what turned on first and what this boiler's checks it did before it actually did ignite and you did see how fast this actually did ignite on central heating mode. So let's get to the board and find out what it did. So let's look behind me here now and have a look at this sequence of operation for this Ariston E Combi 1. Let's start at the top as usual. So you can see the first thing is calling for heat, whether it's a time clock, whether it's a room start, or whether it's smart controls. So we're asking for the central heating to come on. But this time, instead of the pump being the first thing to come on, it's the three-way valve to be activated. Now, did you get it? So when you heard the boiler turn on, did you hear the diverter valve checking itself and making sure it's not stuck? There are a couple of other boiler manufacturers do the same thing, Valent being one of them, where they do the same thing when you turn the boiler on, it checks to see whether the three-way valve's stuck or not. So if you've got that it was a three-way valve, well done. But if you said it was the fan or the pump, you were wrong. Let's have a look at the next thing. So now you can see there's a seven second delay before the pump comes on. Then when the pump comes on, the fan then goes into its pre-purge function. So like on the atmospheric burner, it still puts the fan on with the solenoid valves closed and clears the combustion chamber of any unburnt gas. And that's what the solenoid valves mainly do on the zero governor. There's two of them, one for low fire, one for high fire. And then the faster the fan goes, the um, more gas it sucks in, or like the atmospheric burner, which is just on the burner pressure. So it goes on low speed though first, just to clear any unburnt gas. Let's see what the next thing is. So after the pre-purge, it goes into spark generator on and the fan at low or soft ignition speed. It then brings the gas valve on. It then lights the gas 
and then goes into flame rectification or flame detection control. It then sends the fan up to high speed or ignition speed and the water flow is now checked via the pump and the flow switch. We then have flame modulation, we then have pump speed control or pump modulation because they're now ERP pumps and then we're also checking the thermistors for the overheat control. Then when we turn it off we've got five seconds where the burner is in the off position but the fan still runs and the pump then goes into overrun. So that is the sequence of operation for this E-Combi 1 Ariston boiler when it's in central heating mode and it goes pretty damn quick doesn't it? So it's checking things just like that. So that's central heating mode, what does it do in hot water? Now let's check this boiler in hot water mode. So again everything's turned off, turn the boiler on. So now you know that is the diverter valve checking itself, making sure it's free and it's moving. And it actually goes in three positions. So it goes in heating, hot water and mid position. So turn this on. You can see the display taking ages to come on. Well, there you go. Okay, did a few little checks, make sure everything was working, and now I'm going to put the hot tap on. It's only here. So again, that was pretty instant. So, let's have a look at the sequence of operation for this when it's running in hot water. So again, it's behind me. Let's have a look at this sequence of operation for domestic hot water. And again, let's start at the top. So again, you can see the first thing is turn on the hot tap. And as soon as you turn on the hot tap, the flow sensor or the flow switch is activated. Now, unlike the glow worm, which was a flow turbine, this is a float or a bobbin type. So as you open the tap, the float rises and makes the magnets so it knows uh, the tap has been opened. So it's not spinning round this time like a little hamster wheel, it's a float which rises up and down in a chamber. So that's how it knows the tap has opened. Let's continue. So now the flow switch has been activated, it puts a three-way valve into domestic hot water mode. It then turns the pump on to maximum speed. Again, we go through the spark generator and the fan at low or soft ignition speed. It then opens the gas valve. Again, we've got the flame detection or the flame rectification control. And then our fan goes up to ignition speed. The water flow uh, is checked through the flow sensor and the flame is modulated, the overheat stat then is checked and we have this scale prevention setting. So what's this scale prevention then? So the boiler checks between its flow and return NCCs or its thermistors to make sure there is a big enough temperature difference so it doesn't scale up the plate to plate heat exchanger, which is quite a good idea. So that's what the scale prevention is. Works from that. Well, let's finally finish. So when you turn the tap off, the burner goes off and then the pump goes into overrun for 30 seconds. Well, it's around about 30 seconds anyway. So unlike the atmospheric burner in the video number one, where the pump went off straight away, this one does continue to run for 30 seconds around the heat exchanger to get rid of any residual heat. And it also depends on whether you are running the central heating or not with where the three-way valve is. So um, 
That's how this Ariston boiler works in domestic hot water mode. So if you've liked this look at how condensing boilers sequence of operation works, then why don't you give me a thumbs up? Or leave a constructive comment down below. If you want to give me a thumbs down, remember to double tap it because it gives it an extra boost for double for thumbs down. But if you're not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos like this one. Remember, Mondays and Wednesdays. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and if you want me to do another part to this where, like I did for the atmospheric burner, where I went through the fault codes and stuff, then stick it in a comment down below. If you can't be bothered to do that, then I won't be bothered to do the video. Anyway, catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.